Good morning, scholars. Happy Wednesday. We're going on to chapter five in the wind in the willows. Today, you'll need a pencil and a skills packet if you have extra time. And by the end of the day, you'll turn in Wednesday, September 16th, ELA. You will not need to split your screen today. At the end of our lesson, you will have a Google form assignment. You will not need to follow along with a slide presentation today. You're just going to listen, think, and hear the read aloud. Since we don't need to pause to split our screens today, we're just going to launch into the chapter. And our chapter today is the Badger. So we're going to see Mr. Badger today. Our objective to ex is to explain how characters in a story demonstrate the theme of hospitality. So we've talked about the theme of friendship and loyalty. Today we're focusing on hospitality. We'll do a quick recap. We'll read aloud Mr. Badger. And then at the end, we'll do a beginning of year reading um, assignment. And that will happen right once we're done with our lesson. So a couple of words to review. You don't have a place to write these down today. That's OK. You're just going to listen and say them when I say to Our first word is dejected. Say it. Dejected. And that's to feel sad, depressed, or unhappy. Our next word is theme. Say it. Theme. And that's a broad idea that comes up many times over the course of a story or a book. So our theme today that we are looking for is hospitality. And hospitality is treating guests well and being warm and welcoming or friendly towards them. A hospital person might be very attentive to their guests or friends' needs. This means they're always making sure that their guests or friends are comfortable and that they have everything that they need. Can you think of any examples of hospitality from the story so far? If you remember this first incident, Instance, Rat shares his boat and his picnic lunch with Mole, even though he didn't know that he was coming with him originally. In this picture, we see Rat inviting Mole into his home to spend the night after a rowing incident. So they have a nice fire, cheerful meal, and Rat lets Mole stay in the best bedroom. So he makes him feel right at home. Toad also displays hospitality by inviting Rat and Mole into his caravan and sharing his foods and the beds in the caravan with them. So we've already seen this theme of hospitality in our story. We've heard themes of friendship. Today, you're going to hear more about the theme of hospitality, and I want you to focus on how that is present in our story. Before we start our story today, I want to think about where were we when we finished the last read aloud? We were outside of Mr. Badger's door. In this image, we see Mole and Rat standing outside the door, but we didn't find out whether they actually got in the house or not in the last story. What do you think is going to happen? You might predict that they won't find Badger inside or that Badger will be there and will let him in, let both of them in. So today we will find out whether Mr. Badger will be home and whether he will show hospitality to Rat and Mole. Because Rat warned Mole that that's just the type of person Mr. Badger was. He didn't come over and talk to them the last time we saw him in the story. So we might not expect him to be the most hospitable. We'll find out. Rat and Mole waited patiently for what seemed like a very long time. At last, there was an, the noise of a bolt sliding back, and then the door opened a few inches. Who is it? said a rather gruff voice. Oh, Badger, cried the rat. It's me, Rat, and my friend Mole, and we've lost our way in the snow. What? Ratty, my dear little man, exclaimed the Badger. Come along in, both of you. The two animals tumbled over each other in their eagerness to get inside. The Badger, who wore a long dressing gown, carried a flat candlestick in his paw. This is not the sort of night for small animals to be out, he said paternally. That means kind of like a father. But come into the kitchen. There's a fire there and a supper too. So already we see that Badger is showing hospitality. He welcomed them in. He said that he was like a father. He said, this is not the night for young animals to be out. And he's inviting them in to sit by the fire and have supper. Once 
there, they could dimly see other long, tunnel-like passages branching off in various directions. But there were doors in the halls as well. One of the badgers, one of these, the badger flung open, and at once they found themselves in a large, fire-lit kitchen. The floor was well-worn red brick, and on the wide hearth burnt a fire of logs. So that's like a fireplace. A couple of high-backed settles were facing each other on either side of the fire. In the middle of the room, there stood a long table with benches on either side. So settles are high back benches, places to sit. And a flat candlestick has a handle. So you saw him carrying that in the last uh, picture. He had a little small handle where he could hold on to his candle and prevent the wax from dripping to the floor. The kindly badger guided them to one of the settles and bade them to remove their wet coats and, bo and boots. Then he fetched them dressing gowns and slippers. He bathed the mole's shin with warm water and dressed the cut. When they were thoroughly warm, the badger summoned them to the table to eat a delicious meal. As they dined, the badger sat in his armchair at the head of the table and listened as the animals told their story. When supper was finished, the badger said heartily, Now then, tell us the news from your part of the world. How's old Toad going on? Oh, from bad to worse, the rat said gravely. Another smash up. How many has he had? inquired the badger gloomily. Gloomily. <laughs> Smashes or machines? asked the rat. Oh well, after all, it's the same thing with Toad. This is the seventh. He's been in the hospital three times, put in the mole. And as for the fines he's had to pay, it's simply awful to think of. So all of these new ventures are not going very well for Toad. He keeps trying new things and he always ends up wrecking whatever new thing he buys and getting hurt or hurting other people in the process. Yes, and that's part of the trouble, continued the rat. Toad's rich, we all know, but he's not a millionaire. He's either be, he'll either be killed or ruined. Badger, we're his friends. Oughtn't we uh, to do something? The badger thought for a while. Now look here, he said at last. Of course you know I can't do anything now. The two friends agreed, quite understanding his point. No animal, according to the rules of animal etiquette, is ever expected to do anything heroic during the off-season of winter. So they're saying they can't do anything right now because it's winter and you never have to do any heroic acts in winter. That's an animal rule Miss Goble did not know. Etiquette means having good manners. In other words, the animals with good manners uh, can't do anything right now because they are in the off season. Very well then, continued the badger. But when the year has really turned, if not before, you know, the both animals nodded gravely. They knew. Well then, went on the badger, then we'll bring Toad back for to reason. We'll, you, you're asleep, rat. Not me, said the rat, waking up with a jerk. He's been asleep two or three times since supper, said the mole. He himself was feeling quite lively. Badger's house suited him and made him feel at home, whereas the rat, who slept every night in the bedroom beside a river, naturally felt the atmosphere quite oppressive. So Mole is used to a home that might be slightly underground, maybe dark, but the rat is not used to this environment. This is new for him. He's tired in this new house. Well, it's time we're all in bed, said the badger, getting up and fetching flat candlesticks. Come along, you two, and I'll show you to your quarters. And time, and take your time tomorrow morning. Breakfast at any hour you please. He conducted the two animals to a long room with two little white beds in it. Moments later, the two white beds contained one mole and one rat. The two tired animals came down to breakfast very late the next morning. When they did emerge, they found a bright fire burning in the kitchen and two young hedgehogs sitting on the bench at the table eating oatmeal. Where have you two youngsters come from? said the rat pleasantly. Lost your way in the snow? Yes, sir, said the elder of the two hedgehogs. Me and little Billy here, we were trying to find a way to school and we lost ourselves. At last we found Mr. Badger's back door. I understand, said the rat, cutting himself some rashers or sliced portions of bacon, while the mole dropped some eggs into a saucepan. And what's the weather like outside? Oh, terrible bad, sir, said the hedgehog. Where's Mr. Badger? inquired the mole. The master's gone into his study, sir, replied the hedgehog. And he said as how he was going to be particularly busy this morning, and on no account was he to be disturbed. This explanation, of course, was thoroughly understood. 
the animals well knew that Badger, having eaten the hearty breakfast, had retired to his study. Once there, he had settled himself in an armchair and was being busy in the usual way at this time of year. So he's sleeping. The front doorbell clanged loudly, and the rat sent Billy, the smaller hedgehog, to see who it might be. Presently, Billy returned with the otter. Thought I should find you here, said the otter. They were all in a great state of alarm along the river bank when you didn't return home last night. But I knew that when people were in, it, in any fix, they went to Badger. My, it was fine coming through the snow and the red sun was rising. I was about halfway when I came across a rabbit sitting on a stump. He told me that Mole had been seen in the wild wood last night. Weren't you at all er, nervous? asked the Mole. Nervous? The otter showed a gleaming set of strong white teeth as he laughed. Never. Here, Mole, fry me some sli slices of ham. I'm frightfully hungry. So the Mole, having cut some slices of ham, set the hedgehogs to fry it and returned to his own breakfast while the otter and the rat chatted about the riverbank. A plate of fried ham had just been cleared and sent back for more when the badger entered. He greeted them all. It must be getting on for luncheon time, he remarked to the otter. You must be hungry. Indeed, replied the otter. The sight of these greedy young hedgehogs stuffing themselves makes me feel famished. The hedgehogs looked timidly at Mr. Badger, but were too shy to say anything. Here, you two youngsters, be off home, said the badger kindly. I'll send someone with you to show you the way. Presently, the others sat down to luncheon together. The mole found himself placed next to Mr. Badger, and so took the opportunity to tell Badger how comfortable and how like, how homelike it all felt to him. Once well underground, he said, you know exactly where you are. The badger simply beamed on him. There's no security or peace except underground, the mole agreed, and the badger in consequence got very friendly with him. When lunch is over, he said, I'll take you around this little place of mine. After luncheon, the badger shined a lantern and bade the mole to follow him. Crossing the hall, they passed down one of the principal tunnels, that means the main tunnel, and the wavering light of the lantern gave glimpses on either side of the rooms, both large and small. The mole was staggered at the size, so he's now showing him around his home because mole loves it. How on earth, badger, he said at last, did you ever find the time and strength to do all this? It's astonishing. It would be astonishing, said the badger simply, if I had done it. But as a matter of fact, I did none of it. You see, long ago on the spot where the wild wood stands now, there was a city, a city of people. Here where we are standing, they lived. They were a powerful people and great builders. But what has become of them all? Asked the mole. Who can tell? Said the badger. People come, they stay for a while, and they go. But we remain. There were badgers here long before that same city ever came to be. And now there are badgers here again. When they got back to the kitchen, they found the rat walking up and down. The underground atmosphere was getting on his nerves. Come along, Mole, he said, as soon as he caught sight of them. We must get off while it's daylight. It'll be all right, my fine fellows, said the otter. I'm coming along with you. And if there's a head that needs to be punched, you can confidently rely upon me to punch it. So the otter is very abrasive. He never feels afraid because he thinks other people should be afraid of him. You really needn't fret, Ratty, added the badger. My passages run further than you think. When you are ready to go, you shall lead by one of my shortcuts. Before long, the badger led the way along a damp tunnel that wound and dipped for a weary distance. At last, daylight began to show itself through the tangled growth near the mouth of a passage. So that's the opening. The badger, bidding them goodbye, pushed them hurriedly through the opening and hastily made good again the creepers and brushwood that surrounded it. So creepers are like vines and brushwood is broken branches and twigs. And he hides the opening to his home. So they uh, encounter Otter, who they'd seen before. He showed up to find them because people were worried about Rat. And in this story, we see that Mole loves the badger's home. It's underground, there's lots of tunnels, but Rat does not like this environment. He doesn't like to be underground this long. Were your predictions about whether Mr. Badger shows hospitality to Rat and Mole correct? So if you predicted that he wouldn't be hospitable, then it wasn't correct because it turns out whenever any animal is in trouble, 
they go see Mr. Badger in the wild wood. So he was extremely hospitable to Matt, to roll rat and mole. <laughs> From whose perspective is today's read aloud told? So it's from moles today. And what's Mr. Badger's home like? So according to Mole, it's warm, cozy, welcoming, and it's underground. According to Rat, it would be oppressive because he doesn't like being underground like that. All right, so today you do not need to submit any questions about the read aloud. What you do need to submit is this Google Form assessment. It's linked in your assignment description as SRA Bug Hunt. So what you're gonna do, you're gonna read the passage and then answer the questions. Take your time and do your best. I really wanna see how well you can answer these questions based on what you read. I wanna know how well you can comprehend the passage. So do take your time, but make sure you're doing it by yourself. This is something I wanna figure out how well you can answer the questions not a family member or sibling. So just do your best on your own. Don't fret if you aren't able to answer some of the questions. That's okay. This is more for my information, not so much for a grade. So to find this, you're gonna to go to classwork, scroll down to week two, September 14th through 18th, and then you're gonna click on Wednesday, September 16th, ELA. The Google Slides will look just like this on yours. SRA Bug Hunt. And when you're done, don't forget to turn it in. Today, you need to submit it on Google Forms first and then turn it in on Classroom. So you'll complete the Google Form, answering the questions to the best of your knowledge, and then submit and turn it in. And that's it for today. If you have any questions, please call or text me. Have a great rest of your Wednesday.